everybody, it's Jordan with PDQ.com. Uh, it's past Tuesday again. Normally I'm supposed to wait for the blog to, blog to be live before I shoot the video, but uh, I'm working from home and no one can tell me different, so I'm going with a rough draft. We're going to go forward with this one. August is terrible. Uh, 121 total exploits, 17 critical, two that are already known and one that's actively exploited. If we're looking for kind of a silver lining, the two that are already known are considered important, not critical. I don't know if that is really all that much good news, but I mean, hey, it's better than nothing. Uh, but if we want to kind of highlight the worst of the worst that's going in there, we'll, we'll cover the two that are known first. The first one is uh, uh, CVE 2022-34713. Uh, and this one is remote execution using the Microsoft Support Diagnost Diagnostic Tool. Uh, the reason this one is not listed as a critical is it does require a user to click on some sort of bad link. Uh, whether it's a bad file or a bad email or something, something get them to a location, but then they can run unauthenticated code. So it's listed, listed as a 7.8 instead of a, a 9.0 or anything higher than critical, just because it does require uh, things out of the attacker's control to be successful. Uh, we all know that once you've trained your employees on security, you never have to worry about it again because they're on point. Uh, the other already known one is this uh, 2022 30134, and this one involves exchange. It's on-prem exchange, but if you are a hybrid, it also is going to impact you. And what this is, allows someone to, if they go to a bad uh, service or file with email on an corrupted server, they can read your emails, basically. Uh, they can't send us, at least I, not that I read, but they can read your emails. So any any sort of private information from there uh, is, is uh, I don't know, I guess open to the world, which isn't good at all. Uh, after you pass this one, you're actually still not safe. Uh, you actually have to go in and enable the extended protection program. Uh, and there's a link right there with the tech community on how to enable that to keep you safe. Uh, the last one, I grabbed one of the mini 9.8 criticals, but there's a lot, a lot wrong with this one. But this one is 9.8. It's a remote critical exploitation for Windows point to point. Uh, it requires no permission or user interaction. If it is a remote accessible server, they can run unauthentic code against, unauthentic, unauthenticated code against it, which is not good. Uh, the one saving grace for that one is it does require port 1723 uh, for them to use that attack. Uh, you can disable it and you'll be safe, but I don't know exactly how it's going to impact your environment. You're going to want to talk to your network people, figure out if that's a good idea to, to disable that one or not. On top of that, there's a couple of other 9.8s. There's, uh, once again, NFS is back. That one seems to be a regular going one. This one is NFS 4.1. Uh, the, the change is always the same. You can go through, you can disable that NFS, and, you, and you're safe on that one. There's also an SMB 3.0 that is a 9.8 that requires unauthenticated. So there are several remote attack vectors that require no authentication to run exploit code in this one. So patching is important. Uh, Last couple of months have been slow, so hopefully you've got their patching automated during the downtimes because right now is a good time as ever to be patching as soon as possible. If you're looking for some help from that, uh, take a look at PDQ Deploy and PDQ Inventory. I think they're pretty awesome. I, I still work here. I like it. I, I'd recommend it. I'd go for that direction. Uh, but for one super patch Tuesday, I'm Jordan, and uh, this is this is my pose.